The basis, the basic scripture is found in the book of Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2, is a passage that Peter quotes on the day of Pentecost when he said, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days I will pour out my spirit, saith the Lord. And that promise of the Holy Spirit that would be poured out comes in the middle of this turmoil. The state of Judah, this is Judah we're talking about, not Israel, Judah. Joel is a prophet to Judah. Judah is one of the tribes of Israel. They are in a pretty sorry state and God has chastised them by sending locusts and grasshoppers to eat their crops. Some theologians believe that is just a, uh, a metaphor for literal soldiers that came in. And there were so many, because the Bible does use, they look like grasshoppers or locusts. Whether it be soldiers or locusts and real grasshoppers, there was destruction. And the worst thing is that God was not done. He was going to come in with another wave of judgment and destruction over them. But in the middle of that, because God is so good, He makes them an invitation to fast and to seek Him. And there's elements in that invitation that we might want to consider this morning. The Bible says, The Lord said, It isn't too late. You can still return to me with all your heart. Start crying and mourning and go without eating. This, of course, is the common English version. Don't rip your clothes to show your sorrow. Instead, turn back to me with broken hearts. I am merciful, kind, and caring. I don't easily lose my temper, and I don't like to punish. So... One wave of destruction has come over them. And God's love and mercy just burst forth. And he says, look, before I come again to you with judgment, it's not too late. If, if, you, if you return to me, but the secret is what I'm going to be looking for, what I want to detect, is that you do it with all of your heart. And church, if you embark on this, don't embark half-heartedly. Uh, don't spend half of your fasting time Googling what you can eat. That, 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 it's a time to turn to God and He says, Look, start crying and mourning. That's the level I want you in. It's not a dry fast. It's not just not eating. Here soon, I think, or maybe it went by, I don't know, but Ramadan goes by and you see the restaurants filled with Muslims having their dinner or ending their fast, and God bless them. But th this isn't just a religious gesture. I want, I want you to start crying and mourning and push back your food, go without eating. And then Israel had, had a custom that I believe began sincerely I believe it started with sincerity and that to show that they were fasting to, to their friends who, who might stop by, they would rend or rip their clothes and sit in ashes and, ash, and put ash on their head. And even Job, who was probably the first personality in the Bible, Job may very well be the earliest book that we have in the Bible, when his friends came to him in his condition, he was sitting in ashes. And so the people would make this outward sign of an inward condition and they would rip their clothes apart, sit in ashes and put sackcloth on them. But over the years, this, this turned into an external gesture. There was nothing going on in the heart, and, but they still would externally rip their clothes. And God said, look, enough of that. I'm done with that. I want to go deeper. I want to have a relationship with you, but you seem to be away from me. And before I come back with another wave of judgment, 
Would you rip your clothes, your heart, and not your clothes? I want you to turn back to me with broken hearts. I want you to know that I'm merciful and caring. I don't lose my temper. I don't like to punish. I don't like that. I am the Lord, your God. Perhaps I will change my mind and treat you with mercy. Then you will be blessed with enough grain and wine for offering sacrifices to me. Sound the trumpet on Zion. Call the people together. This is, this is a call from God. This is a, this is a serious invitation. It's not just that I sit in my office and say, what should we do next to torture Fountain of Truth? How should I try to make their life more displeasing this week? No. Th this begins at long times of prayer. And God speaking so gently that I can't even hear him sometimes. And then the message drops. Call my people to pray. Call my people to fast. Sound the trumpet. Call the people together. Show your sorrow by going without food. Make sure that everyone is fit to worship me. Bring adults, children, babies, and even bring newlyweds from their festivities. In the King James, it says, let the, broom, let the groom leave its, its chambers and the, and the bride leave her chambers. He's calling them out of the honeymoon. But before you faint... The Jewish honeymoon was one year long. So he's calling them out of that. And then he says, tell my servants, the priests, ministers, this is serious. Call the priests to cry inside the temple and to offer this prayer near the altar. This is the prayer. Save your people, Lord God. Don't let foreign nations make jokes about us. Don't let them laugh and ask, where is your God? The Lord was deeply concerned about his land and had pity on his people. In answer to their prayers, he said, I will give you enough grain, wine, and olive oil to satisfy your needs. No longer will I let you be insulted by nations. So, March 31st we begin, and if you get your notes, there's no blanks there, but I, I just want to uh, point out a few things. The first is that the theme of our fast is with broken hearts. Let's not do it otherwise or in any other manner. With broken hearts. Don't let it be you who says on day four, when did the fast start? Or I will begin tomorrow. Or, you know, I just... And the... the well, we'll talk about the flesh right now. So, I just want to answer quickly, briefly... Eight questions about fasting. Some I will just briefly touch because you have the material in front of you. Who is calling this fast? Jesus' fast, his 40-day fast, was called by the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit to go out into the wilderness where the devil tempted him for 40 days. He ate nothing all that time and was very hungry. And because Jesus was man, was God made flesh... Don't you think that Jesus does not know what it is to be hungry? He was very hungry. He did not eat for 40 days. But the call is being made by the Lord. It is not me. Believe me. I love breakfast. I almost speak in tongues when we talk huevos rancheros. <laughs> refried beans and flour tortillas. And then heavens after that. But it is time to push, push the food away. What are the physical benefits and risks in fasting? Well, here's the good one. You're going to lose weight? Oh, you keto people. <laughs> push away your meat and proteins. Um, there's risks in fasting when it's not spiritual. On Tuesday night, we had... A Dr. Jacob here, who gave the ladies a stress test, <laughs> and he said, fasting is, is pretty bad for your health. You need to eat. Your metabolism needs to function. However, when it's in the spirit or a spiritual fast, uh, then the risks are minimal. I am a diabetic, and I have to eat my meals at a certain time. The, but the interesting thing is when I fast, I have no problems. 
In fact, my A1C goes down after 21 day fast. Hallelujah. And so if, if you're just not eating, if, if, if your fast does not include a lot of prayer and a lot of Bible reading and meditation, then you just, you're going to get headaches. As it is the first three days of your 21 day fast, your body is going to get rid of toxins. It's going to get rid of demons. <laughs> it's going to get rid of... You will be in a bad mood. You will be very irritated. And you'll be saying, that pastor, or you blame me, go ahead. I can't hear you anyway. Your body's going to react. And the headaches, and, and you know, just the hunger. Uh, and I know you're thinking, pastor, are you saying we're going to not eat for 21 days? Well, maybe some people will do that, but I'll show you a little later. However, there can be anemia, ketosis, body aches, dizziness, heartburn, poor control of diabetes, and headache. But there's also benefits. Fat stores in the body get burnt. Okay? These spare tires that we carry around, they'll be gone. Temporary relief of the digestive system. It will rest. Detoxification. Hormonal efficiency, organs, rest. What are the spiritual benefits? Oh my goodness. Fasting was done by Moses and Elijah and Jesus. Moses, of Moses it says that he didn't drink water or eat for 40 days. Hey, and if Nelson Mandela and Cesar Chavez and a host of others can fast for political, secular, or even fanatical reasons... If they can fast to protest or draw attention to their cause, will the church consider fasting to draw close to the Lord? I, 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 I've read accounts of people sitting next to Satanists on an airplane and they have conversations and the Satanists say, oh, we fast 40 days before Halloween. You know, you may believe that or not. I don't know, but we're actually fasting for the spirits to go through the masks. I don't know. And if Satanists can fast, how about the church? Well, what are the spiritual benefits? My carnal appetites are placed under the control of the spirit. Carnal appetites in carnal, that is not evil, like eating and resting. That's good. But then there's the, there's the crucifixion of the flesh, according to Galatians 2.20, that helps me crucify the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. The, 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 the concupiscence of the body, what the body wants. It helps me walk in the spirit. It gives me rhemas. When you fast and read the Bible, you will get a clearer vision of what is being said. And do not be surprised nor alarmed if while you're reading something, it's like a shaft of light that just comes to your heart or your understanding. Those are called rhemas. Which the rhema is the Greek, one Greek word for word, and a rhema will come and shoot and it'll give you understanding. It, it, out of this, you can be reading Psalm 23 that we read all the time, but you will get a new understanding, a fresh revelation in fasting. It just conditions you to receive more from the Lord, and that's really exciting when you get rhemas from the Lord. It gives me a quiet and affable spirit. Some of us need to spiritually chill out. Loud, boisterous, hey, it's time to shh, woman or man. It's, it's just people that are fasting. And Jesus said, look, when you fast, don't, 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 don't put your sad face up. And, are you okay? I'm fasting for Jesus. No, you're not fasting for Jesus. You're fasting for you. He already fasted. But it does give you a nice, quiet spirit, just like you don't have to be running, line, running to be in line at the buffet because you're not going to the buffet. <laughs> and if there's a line at the prayer room, you'll just wait. God, I'd love to see that happen. <laughs> it allows me time for much prayer. Yes, yes. There's going to be a calling in your voice, in your spirit. Yes, yes. Come, pray. Come, I'm waiting for you in the secret, in the closet. I would suggest that you find a place in your house, a corner, uh, a, a room by itself, some place where you can vi visit frequently during this 21-day fast. Have your music there ready. 
have your, you know, uh, blanket, your pillow to put on your knees, not to fall asleep. And you, you, that's your place of prayer. And how wonderful it would be to hear four, five, six-year-olds, where's mommy? Where's mommy? She's praying again. Daddy's in the prayer corner again. My sensitivity to the presence of God will increase. You will find that your spirit will begin to commune with God even while you're driving. Turn off the news. Put on a song. Put on a preaching. There's some real good ones on YouTube. Under Fountain of Truth. No. You can find more good preachings. But don't be surprised that you're just, you're just driving. And instead of cursing the traffic and... All of a sudden, you just feel the presence of God in your car, and your eyes will well up, and you say, what is this? And God's, God's just saying, I just, I'm here with you. Thank you. I love you. I, I want to be with you. My worship will deepen. By, by the second and third Sunday of the fast, we will see a deepening of our worship here. Um, my praise will increase. My priorities will change. Things that used to be important are not going to be as important. Others will change. I will hear God. I will hunger more for His presence. I will rest both physically and spiritually. Um, now, what is a Daniel's fast? Um, those of you with health issues or those who perform strenuous work like construction and you have to work, it'd be kind of difficult and cruel to invite you to fast and expend all the energy working. So, you can do a Daniel's fast. We find a Daniel's fast both in the first chapter of Daniel and in the 10th chapter of Daniel. One is when they came and Daniel said, just feed us vegetables and water. Just vegetables and water. That's one part of a Daniel's fast, that you can do that one. And then in the 10th chapter, he needed revelation from God, so he says, I ate no uh, meat or drank wine or any pleasant foods. So you can get a combination of both. Of course, the 10th chapter is no pleasant food. So they went, you know, in and out burgers. And um, that means that you do eat something broth, soups, um, vegetables, uh, but not, you know, but don't go to Sizzler salad bar and say, well, I'm just having salads. And you come out with meatballs and all kinds of stuff. You get that, that's not a Daniel's fast. There's more resources I put there for you for, for that menu ideas. Uh, and you have them right there on that Daniel fast, WordPress. So that's where you eat. But don't do this. Don't do, I'm going to do a Daniel's fast during the day. And then change your mind at 3 o'clock. No, I think I'll just do a regular fast and eat at night. And then, so you're just eating all day. <laughs> See? The other day, I think somebody said, there's a 14-hour fast. Well, those of you in construction, what you can do is fast your dinner. And have breakfast and maybe lunch. And then come home after work. And instead of having dinner, you, you fast. You go pray. And, and you know what will happen when... Because... Uh, some of us are going to fast. I'm going to show you how I do it. I fast a couple of days. Either I fast one day and eat in the evening, and I'll have a broth or a soup or something. Or I'll fast two or three days and eat in the evening, and then do it again and eat in the evening. There's, you can do it that way. Uh, so it's really up to your health condition and up to your hunger for God and how you're going to do it. But either way, pray a lot. If, if you have to take medications, take them. It's a little glass of water and take. Nobody's going to die, okay? If you oopsie it, say, oh my God, I forgot I was fasting. And you have three quarters of a combination pizza down your throat. Don't go commit suicide. Swallow the part that's already in your mouth. Put the other one aside and begin your fast again, okay? We have to sometimes discipline our discipline. But pastor, you know, well, I'll get to that right now. What other ways can I fast? Again, I said you can fast during the days. You can fast uh, sweets. You can uh, eat, fast every day and eat in the evenings. And then fast two or three days or something like that. Wives, when your husband comes home and says, I'm fasting, you say, you're not going to have dinner. Come here. You look weak. You look weak. Eat something. You're going to die. Let him make that decision. 
or let her make that decision. And it's hard for mothers who have to cook for their kids and stuff and then not eat. No cheating. Look to the right, look to the left, into the mouth. Look to the right, look to the right. Don't, don't do that. This is a fast before the Lord. What else can I fast besides food? I would highly recommend and in fact in, in, insist maybe that we abstain from all television and movies and video games. You're, we're fasting. So put away the remote controls. Done. Anything that nourishes the flesh, even if it's good or neutral. Sporting events. Don't go to the USC game during your fast. Praise God, I'm not going to have any snacks. No. <laughs> no. Now, if your baby plays t-ball, well, take them. You know, take them, but continue your fast. Uh, we will fast gossip. Hallelujah. Fast unnecessary shopping. Fast silliness. Let's put jokes aside. Let's, what did he say? Weep and mourn be, before me. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. All recreation. Don't, don't go and play basketball during your fast. Non-work related computer and online stuff. Fast it. All social media. Okay. Turn off your notifications. Use your phone only for work and necessary family things. Get off. I'm going to be off Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. Say goodbye to it. You will not die. You'll be back in 21 days. Uh, now, sometimes in trips that I take, we do some videos and documentaries. Well, we'll, we'll put those on, okay? But you be the judge of you. How about marital intimacy? What, what about that? Depending on the type of fast, Paul instructs by permission and not by commandment. And he says, defraud ye not one the other. In other words, don't defraud your marital relationship. Except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. So you need to talk about that, and you need to say, okay, well, we're going to be fasting this week or this days or whatever, and then you come back together as you would do a meal. What if I have a vacation or a birthday party or other celebration during this time? Well, you heathens. No, no. You, what you do, you fast. I mean, if you really have to have cake, okay, if you have a trip planned, if you have a thing, well... Go with blessing and without guilt. Have your party. Eat. And uh, we will pray for you that the loving God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> While we're fasting, you're eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Fast up to that day and celebrate with blessings and then rejoin and continue your fast. So this is a season then when we're going to invest our time with God. You don't want to binge from here to 11.59 on March 30th and eat half a cow and, and, all the, and then say, I'm fasting so I need to store up. You're going to get sick. In fact, if possible, start eating less beginning today. Well, let's start tomorrow. Okay, so today you can go in Jesus' name. Go eat less. Let your stomach shrink. Get used to the idea, I'm, I'm going to be before the Lord. And then let's pray a lot. Listen, I'm, I'm about finished here, but we're, we're going to fast to break our hearts. We're going to fast for missions because we are now a missions church. Remember, we are a missions church. And missions requires a lot of prayer. This week, tomorrow, a team of eight, eight of us is going to Japan. We're going to go visit our two churches over there. And we need your prayers. And last time, I think we told you we were in 10 campuses. We got two more this week. We are now in 12 campuses. Another one in, in Guatemala and another one, another one in Mexico. So we need prayer for those campuses. Pray for us. Pray for San Diego. Listen, Tim, uh, on the 14th of April, we're, we're doing the San Diego launch from here. 
a lot of my family's coming. I think uh, Rachel's family coming. Um, some of my friends are coming in the ministry. And we're going to uh, ordain Tim as pastor. He's going to take about 30 or 40 uh, top leaders from this place. Good producers, good musicians, good singers. He, the, the, we're, 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 he's not taking them. We're, we're investing them over there. They're, half, oh, they're all over there today. And we're, gonna, we're going to plant over there. What does that mean? That during your fast, God may be asked you to step up in the leadership position. On the 6th of April, next uh, in a couple Saturdays, I'm going to invite you. We're going to do the launching in Las Vegas. We already have a place in Las Vegas. And we're going to do a launching. So we're going to be... That's going to be during the fast. So don't go, Vegas, I'll go support. Yeah, it's going to go to church and then drive by all the buffets and rebuke them in Jesus' name as you drive back home because you're fasting. Can you imagine fasting in Vegas? The level is a liar, you see. And, and uh, let me just talk to you for a little bit. That, that's why I, I, I had a short message today. So as, as some brothers already told me, brother, I want to go help in Las Vegas, seriously. So as people move out of Rancho to go support the churches that we're starting in different areas, God might call you to a leadership you never even dreamed of. God might call you to step up. Who's going to be the next vacancy? Who's going to fill the next vacancy? It may be you, and during this fast, put yourself in, at God's service. And say, my goodness, maybe he's calling me. Get tired of sitting on the chair and coming to church. That's good and everything. Okay. Let me tell you a little more. Missions not only takes prayer and intention. And believe me, I, uh, uh, Pastor Domingo and Patrick and the, some of the team, we, we, we have to put the brakes on this because it's going too fast. I'm getting calls every day from different countries. And I just, I just said, stop, stop. We, I can't. And so wh when we talk about missions, we're talking primarily about prayer. But we're also talking about giving we're talking about giving. Now, giving in missions. I want to thank you. I think, I think I have what the offering came. Do we have that slide? Give me the next slide. $27,000 were collected a couple weeks ago <laughs> for missions. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're supporting. We're sending $200 a month to a lot of places. These people pay the rent of a little building or, or the missionary eats or he puts gas or he pays his taxi. So your offering that you gave a couple weeks ago is paying taxis and Ubers and buying chairs. We just bought, I think, 100 chairs for, for Guatemala because they needed chairs. And so that's what that money, that money is not used here. That's for missions. That's what you gave it for. And in the excitement of re reaching for that money, for receiving that money a few weeks ago, we all missed something much more important, I believe. And it is this. Brother Domingo, in his video, he mentioned that we wanted to create an army of people, and everybody can do this, who would give 10 or $20 a month just reoccurring. That's two cups of coffee. That's one drive by McDonald's. And just, if you, if you go, give me the next slide, please. If you go to uh, everyheartheal.com, you can sign up. Now watch what happened to me. I said, yes, Domingo. That's Domingo, who's our missions director, he says, we can get 500 people to do this, and by 220, we can have 2,000 people giving minimum $10. And really, that's, that's, that's all we're asking, 10 or $20. Some people have asked me, what if I want to give 100 a month or 200 a month? Go for it. Knock yourself out. Do it. But for these types of things, we, don't, we can't beg because they're so special. And so here's what happened. I saw that video. I said, yes, great, great. And then I forgot to sign up. I just forgot. 
And I said, Rachel, did you set him? She goes, I did. She put on her little holy face. I did. <laughs> and she did. So I just signed up this week. So today after church, there's tables out there. And if you would just go by, give your, it's 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month for missions. Now, um, that is just missions. And I will not beg for that because it's so wonderful and so beautiful what happens in mission. But let me tell you something. This is almost like a business meeting slash fast slash you better get your face on the ground and seek God, right? And let's win the world, every heart healed all over the globe. This is kind of that message, right? People on, people in YouTube, people that are watching me, you are welcome to join our fast. You are welcome to join our missions um, effort and campaign also. You're welcome. So Gennaro put on the screen there someplace so you can join because God is doing great. Isn't it exciting to be a part of something global? Wow. It's a, now watch this. Watch this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. This is, just, this is just an announcement slash I hope you get it. All right. Thursday, we walked next door and walked through that building that is now for lease. And if we're able to get that building, that opens up for 77 more parking spaces, which if approved by the city and all that, we could probably knock that wall down, move everything to the middle, and just fill this whole thing up. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, here's the problem. Here's, now, here's the situation. I am not going to ask you for money for that. I'm not going to say, hey, sign it. No, no. Give your tithes, offerings, and missions. That's it. So, here's my appeal. Anyone here who is not tithing consistently, if you would consider tithing consistently, we could get that building without feeling anything at all. I am not going to put more, more pressure on you and keep asking and asking. What I ask for is not for me. It's for missions and for the running of the church. But how many would like to see our school and institute and children's ministry, just a dynamic children area over there and 77 over there. So um, the announcement is out. Think about it. Uh, if you do not tithe, consider, consider. Say, you know what, I'm going to start doing this. And if, what do we need, Patrick? About 70 people that don't tithe? And, and we'll get that building. And, and then we'll just have complete control of this whole corner. And we can do that. But I'm not going to, to uh, ask for offerings for that and make campaigns for that. No, no. If it's ours, it'll be ours. If it's not, it's not. I'm not going to lose hair over it. I'm excited because during the fastings, God gives me a lot of word and a lot of revelation, a lot of messages that, that I share with you. And I'm so looking forward. Just, you know, my flesh gets, just gets thick. The flesh gets strong. It's easier to get upset and watch more TV and movies and all that. It does. It, it likes it. And I'm looking forward to cutting off all of that and just seeking the face.